Check, check, check. Check, check. Switching from mic, uh, line to mic, checking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, checking two, three, four, five, six, seven. Good? All right. All right, I, I, we're going to try to do this right at, at 4.30, so we're on time, so it's about, uh, about six minutes away. Thanks, sir.
Good afternoon. Today's NTSB briefing will be done by Vice Chairman Bruce Landsberg, L-A-N-D-S-B-E-R-G, Captain Connor of the U.S. Navy, and John Lovell, the investigator in charge.
Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, joining us on the uh, second day of Miami Air International uh, Flight uh, 293 major investigation. Um, we've identified all of the parties who will be uh, participating in this investigation, including uh, obviously Miami Air International, uh, the FAA, Boeing, uh, CFM Engine Company, uh, the Teamsters Union representing the pilots, uh, the uh, flight attendant uh, union, and uh, uh, the Navy is also going to be joining us as part of the, uh, the parties. We have a full team in place now. Uh, we've uh, been suffering some weather delays because of uh, thunderstorms and lightning and heavy rain, which has complicated our efforts. I'd like to start off with the flight data recorder, which we recovered yesterday and was flown up to the uh, um, NTSB laboratory in Washington, D.C., and we have a few numbers for you. Let me stress that this is preliminary information, but uh, it'll, it'll at least get you started. Uh, the aircraft speed at uh, touchdown, the airspeed, was 163 knots. The ground speed at touchdown was 178 knots, which in, translates roughly to about a 15-knot tailwind. Uh, the flap setting at touchdown was 30 degrees, and the uh, ground spoilers deployed at three seconds uh, after touchdown. Uh, the aircraft had been in maintenance, and uh, the maintenance log noted that the left-hand thrust reverser was inoperative, and there are procedures to deal with that on the minimum equipment list. Uh, I would point out that uh, this is preliminary information and we'll have more for you uh, as it becomes available. The second area is the salvage operations and um, depending upon where the aircraft is uh, removed to, whether it stays on uh, Navy property or whether it's moved uh, someplace off Navy property will dictate how the uh, aircraft is removed from the uh, uh, resting place at this point. Uh, probably will involve a barge if it goes off of Navy property. Uh, we're going to be very careful about how we move the aircraft because we want to preserve it uh, and all of the perishable evidence that goes along with that, so uh, a great care will be uh, emphasized in that. That will also allow us to get to the cockpit voice recorder, which is still uh, in the tail of the aircraft and underwater. Before we can move the aircraft, we have to defuel it, uh, take fuel off of it. And normally these aircraft are fueled and defueled uh, underneath the wing. Uh, because we can't get to the underside of the aircraft, uh, we've had to cut holes in the top of the wing, and uh, there's roughly 1,200 gallons of fuel remaining. And because of the weather and the storms and lightning, uh, we've been very, very careful not to get uh, uh, too far into that. Uh, the Navy is uh, helping us uh, in, in managing uh, that circumstance. Uh, let me address uh, the pets at this point because uh, that's an area of concern for all of us. Uh, the uh, Navy has arranged to have some divers that are uh, probably on scene right now uh, removing the pets. Uh, from the forward cargo hold. The next section I want to get to is the flight operations. And again, I will stress that we're very early into the process. Uh, we will expect to get a lot more as we get the uh, cockpit voice recorder out. Um, the original plan for the pilots was to land to the west on runway 28. And um, at some point as they uh, arrived in the area, the pilots requested to air traffic control that they change the direction of landing and land to the east on runway 10. Uh, they were advised that the uh, Navy had a uh, arresting gear or wire barrier set up uh, for recovery from uh, Navy aircraft uh, operating offshore in case they couldn't land on the carrier. What that does is um, it essentially uh, reduces the length of available runway. So even though uh, runway 10 is about 9,000 feet long, uh, the uh, pilots were advised that because of this barrier, which is located approximately 1,200 feet 
uh, from the end of the runway. That displaced the threshold, making the effective run uh, length of the runway about 7,800 feet. So we'll be getting into uh, much more detail on that uh, as we uh, have it. Um, I already mentioned the cockpit voice recorder. When we recover it, we'll give us a lot more information on what the crew was thinking, uh, internal discussions, and how they uh, discuss things with air traffic control and their decision-making process. You can uh, get your updates at, uh, follow us at uh, NTSB underscore uh, newsroom. And if anybody has any witness video, uh, we'll be looking for that. And that uh, is uh, witness at NTSB.gov. Um, again, I'd like to uh, thank our friends at the Navy for being so supportive to us, uh, to the uh, first responders. And we'll take your questions. Uh, and uh, if you would, please uh, raise your hand. I'll call on you and then uh, uh, identify who you are and who you're with. So, ma'am. Uh, we do not have that data. I suspect that, uh, that we'll know exactly how much, air, uh, how much fuel was on board the aircraft, but that's a little hard to tell. The Navy uh, uh, and their contractors have done a really excellent job, though, of containing it uh, with the booms that they put around. Uh, we were out on the site yesterday, and I walked out uh, on the uh, approach light pier adjacent to the aircraft. You could smell the fuel. But it, uh, from what I could tell, it was very nicely contained with uh, several layers of booms. Next question. Sir. Has this curtailed the training flights with uh, other aircraft on base? I will uh, let uh, Captain Connor uh, answer that one. Uh, in terms of training flights at, at uh, the airfield, obviously during the weekend we don't do a lot of training flights. Uh, we were... Um, uh, we are coordinating with our squadrons to allow some um, some very limited flights tomorrow morning, starting at about 0, 06:30. Uh, we want to get those aircraft out uh, by 7:30 so that we can have our full attention to uh, continued efforts. Uh, those aircraft would, will not return to NAS Jacks due to um, obviously the, the aircraft uh, location. We don't want to have any aircraft, uh, you know, flying overhead or, or, or landing on runway 10. So that's going to limit the Orions. Or uh, correct. Until until we have the aircraft moved, uh, we will continue to be closed. But again, uh, we are allowing some aircraft to depart uh, and reposition to another location so that they can continue to do their training. Yes, sir. Ryan Nelson, Action News, Jax. Are there any concerns that the cockpit voice recorder may be damaged, or you know, is there full faith that it's going to be operable when you get to it? Any concerns that the cockpit voice recorder uh, may be damaged? We're pretty confident at this point that the uh, uh, tail end of the aircraft is in, in very good shape and uh, these recorders are, are quite robust. So uh, uh, we have high confidence level that uh, uh, we'll be able to get it back and uh, get a, a pretty thorough readout on it. Nice, Jim. Yes, sir. <clears throat> um, you talk about a, a touchdown speed at about 178 knots. Uh, that's a little high for a 737. Is it not, and with the thrust reverser out of, out of service, um, can you characterize the, the landing speed particularly? Out? That's one of the things we're going to be looking at. Um, obviously, we have to take into account what the environment was uh, uh, at the time, uh, what the weather conditions were, uh, the aircraft configuration, and so um, I can't give you an answer on that right now. But will you characterize the landing speed as, as, as high as normal? As I, can't, I can't tell you at this point because we, we can't make a determination on what was appropriate until we know the full condition and the environment in which it was. Ma'am? Yeah, Rosa Perez from CNN. You mentioned that, the, that normally aircraft land to the west, but um, in this particular case, they asked to land to the east. Is that the question is, uh, aircraft normally land to the west, and why did they change? Uh, aircraft typically will land into the wind, and so uh, I, we can't characterize it as they normally land to the west. In this particular case, they, uh, the airport uh, was configured to, to land to the west. The pilots requested 
to change the uh, active runway. Uh, we don't know what they were thinking or why, or why they made that choice, and that will be one of the things that we uh, look to find out as we go through the cockpit voice recorder, and I would also point out uh, that there are ongoing interviews with the crew at this point, so we, we should get more. Sir. Thank you. Tom Giusto, ABC News. Some of the passengers have told us they thought the top of the plane cracked on the landing. Do you have any information about whether the top of the plane cracked? Uh, I have no information on that at all. I can assure you that our uh, structures people will be looking very carefully uh, at that and uh, will have made a thorough assessment uh, uh, probably before we move the aircraft. Uh, that would be a fairly obvious thing. Uh, Mr. Lovell, who's our investigator in charge, perhaps you'd like to address uh, anything more on that? The um, examination of the wreckage uh, from, the mi from the standpoint of trying to effectively recover it is ongoing at this point. As we stated earlier, it was delayed, um, but however, that is ongoing, and if there is damage to the, to the wreckage, um, it will certainly be cataloged, and, and we will be able to give you more information on that. The, the priorities, however, are stated uh, by the, the vice chairman, and that is where we're focusing on now, particularly with respect to removing it. Can you describe, One, sir, some of the, the, the damage you've seen uh, from what you've been able to assess the, the state of the aircraft? Give us a sense for perhaps what the, the, the force of the impact and whatnot, just by based on some of the damage you've been able to see. Mr. Lovell? How the aircraft is positioned now um, certainly uh, gives you great limitation, puts a lot of limitations on, on a good thorough assessment. Um, we are not aware um, of the extent of the damage underneath the waterline simply because it's not seen. I think to be able to give you a decent assessment of the state of the aircraft at this time would not be, be really feasible um, given the fact of how it's sitting, how it's positioned, and from what we see, it looks in reasonable condition above the waterline. Um, but again, to be able to go into that deeper, um, we would not be able to give you an accurate ind indication right now. Okay. One other point I'd like to make is the, the people doing the salvage uh, are very experienced, and, and our team is very experienced as well. So uh, they'll have a pretty good idea of, of what went on. Ma'am? I'm going to ask uh, about the passengers. Any other updates? Uh, I don't have anything further on the passengers. Uh, uh, Captain Connor, do you have any further uh, information on the passengers? Uh, the only thing I have to add on the passengers, they, they have all left uh, the base. They've all gone on to further travels to their uh, original destinations or whatever plans they had or maybe changed as, as a result of the, um, the incident. One other curiosity I had about children being on board, why would children be on board? Um, I don't uh, specifically, uh, uh, you know, you know, know why. Uh, obviously, there are Navy uh, you know, personnel assigned to Guantanamo Bay, but I think that we, you know, better uh, uh, we can follow up and get, you know, get back to you on that. Ma'am. What are your other options to assess the damage if it were to be taken off site on a barge or something like that? 